Hello guys! Today I would like to present to you a deck that is finally playable in its form, and with playable I mean it can keep up with the current meta, and in my opinion it is a deck that is definitely disrespected and underrepresented in the um, highlights of Photon Hypernova and its releases. And the deck I'm talking about is Ritual Dogmatica. No Necros Dogmatica, no Incantations, no Megalith, no weird combo stuff. Ritual Dogmatica Control, or White Knight Control, as uh, some people would call it. And this deck got a lot of crazy cards as support that empower the deck like... They couldn't have printed anything better except for making the current cards even more broken that they released for this. So uh, rather than waiting for this, um, I will get right into the deck. Also, uh, if you guys are interested in uh, this playmat, I will provide an image towards this playmat in a high resolution so that if you want to, you can uh, print, uh, let this uh, playmat be printed free of charge, at least from my side. You will still have to pay for the um, commission uh, towards the site of choice. So if you want to play some Dogmatica deck, you can enjoy this playmat. Anyways, so let's get started with deck profile. First of all, uh, we are going to start off with Triple Ecclesia because she is the Stratos of the deck. Uh, previously to Photon Hypernova, she didn't have that much strength as a card, and you were mainly uh, based around searching Nadir, or, or like resolving Nadir Servant as much as possible by just fishing for it. But finally, Ecclesia herself uh, generates card advantage uh, in a sense that it's actually like kind of ridiculous and it is because she you know she can search a new card that came out in fi uh, photon hypernova also uh she is uh now with her searches very threatening towards the board due to uh how you're playing the game accompanying her is uh dogmatica fleur de lis and we are actually playing two to respect the kashtira meta which like Kashtira is still an uh, expensive deck, but I think that deck will still exist, and you will have to respect it, and therefore playing two Fleur is invaluable, just in case uh, their Rise Heart banishes one of them. Because uh, Fleur is the in engine out towards the biggest problem this deck, uh, this deck will be facing, and that is Kashtira a Rise Heart. Um, and then we also are playing one Maximus. He finally got a new form in the stack, and he's still very powerful, but you will have to uh, be careful when you use him. And uh, there are a couple situations where you can actually even resolve him versus tier limit, but you have to be very careful on when you resolve it. The thing with uh, tier limit is that if they uh, are through a couple of fusion summons uh, when you're going second against them, the more fusion summons they used in that turn, the uh, the weaker uh, a send off of Max a kid kill off sent out of Maximus is. So if you can use uh, Maximus to um, send something after they already like resolved two or three tier names. Uh, Maximus actually becomes more card advantage for you, especially with the new cards we can also send. This rounds up all of the normal monsters from Dogmatica, but we're still on the uh, ritual side. So for R4, we're playing uh, White Relic of Dogmatica. Uh, she is generally now better because it is finally viable due to the release of a certain card that I've been hinting towards. Uh, she's actually viable as a summon turn one because she can lead into an actual board. Can, uh, the condition is that you're opening that card. Then White Knight of Dogmatica. 
your main interruption player. Um, he's still very powerful, and he became even more powerful thanks to a certain card that I'm still going to hint at. And then, for one of the new cards, we're playing one Dogmatica Alva Zoa. Um, this is your finishing move, which you are going to use to uh, set a foot on an established game state. So this is not an end board card. This is a toolbox card. What you're trying to do with this is put that uh, on the board after the game has been played a little bit, and then say, do something and out it. If they cannot out it, you're probably going to win the game. Because first of all, it's huge, like 4,000 attack is ridiculously huge. And um, second of all, it also threatens their grind game in a way, in a pretty brutal way. So the effect of uh, Dogmatica Albazoa is, first of all, while it's on the field, every Dogmatica monster on the field is unaffected by the effects of Fusion, Link, Synchro, and XYZ monsters. That means not only if they're summoned out of the extra deck, but in general. So if they're sent to the graveyard, they will actually not harm this. There is an exception, though, uh, and this is a specific ruling. Uh, if you ever face a branded player, ironically, and you run into a fusion summoned Mirror Jade, and it triggers its effect to destroy your board. Even if you control this, your board will be destroyed. Keep this ruling in mind. You will lose games to it if you uh, do not know this ruling. Uh, otherwise, uh, you're safe and secure from most of the stuff and uh, that Tier Lament can uh, throw at this. The only way they can really out this is either by Saliac, which you are going to out, because you have so many Entascends, it's ridiculous. Or by having Pearl Rhino plus a Shuffler or a way to Fusion Summon. That's the only ways they are going to in-engine out this Alvazoa. Or they Triple Tactics Talents take it. So what you have to do is play around Triple Tactics while this is on the field. Let it sit there, let them marinate on how they out this, and let them waste their resources. The second effect this thing has is actually two effects, and your opponent gets to choose one of them. So you activate this effect, and depending on the board state, your opponent will be able to choose if they want to, do, to either count their extra deck and send for every two cards in their extra deck, one card from their hand or from their extra deck to the graveyard, Keep in mind, this is an effect sign, so it will trigger tier elements. Uh, or shuffle all their uh, monsters, all their fusion, XYZ, link, synchro monsters that they currently control back into the extra deck. The second effect, they can only choose if they uh, control such a monster. So uh, they will usually uh, be forced to use the first one unless they have... Uh, or they have the choice if they have an established board. What is very relevant is if you are if you manage to summon White Relic and Albazoa, you have OTK um, because this is 8,500 damage. And White Relic also has another OTK, which I'm not playing in this deck, and I will be posting a video about it. And uh, because it is quite a fancy OTK uh, involving the Mikako engine. I currently do not own the Mikango engine, and I don't play it in this current version because of some issues I have with it. But if you feel like running a three-card Mikango engine, it has a lot of synergy with the deck, especially due to the new cards. So these are our three ritual monsters. We do not play any more. And this also rounds up our Dogmatica monsters. For other generic helpers, we are running two Diviner of the Herald. She is not the most impactful card in the stack. She just is a Manju that you can link away. The bad thing about her, and the, the good and bad thing about her, is she sends one card from your extra deck to the graveyard to get the search. 
It is good if you want to summon Maximus. It is bad for your grind game. And then, for our last main deck monster, Triple Catch Tira Fenrir. Uh, this thing is just broken. It goes plus one. And this is the theme of the deck. You get, you're going, you're trying to plus on yourself as much as possible. So just summoning a Fenrir and searching another Fenrir for the next turn is Im immensely threatening. And he also goes very well with White Knight of Dogmatica. And he helps explaining White Knight of Dogmatica to your friends if you play against them or your uh, tournament uh, opponent. So triple Fenrir is pretty relevant, especially against Cash Tira. And I'll get to that. So this rounds up all the monsters that we're playing. For our spells, of course we cannot uh, play this deck without the best spell in the game. Uh, Nadir Servant has a ridiculous amount of good targets you can send, and thanks to a new card, you can actually send Garura to search anything in those uh, over um, over an Axis, if I may say. And now to the spell that I've been hinting at, Dogmatica Matrix. This card is stupid. Actually stupid. So, first of all, this is a tanky, so it searches your you either a Dogmatica Ritual monster or a Dogmatica Ritual spell. Yeah, and adds, adds it to your hand. But in addition, if you activate this going second, or if your opponent controls Abyss Deal, or if they half missed you on your Ecclesia, you get to search one Dogmatica card. Spell card, monster, trap, yes, you can search Punishment off of this. And in the usual case, you're going to search Fleur de Lis off of this, because you're going to be already controlling a Dogmatica Ecclesia, which then insulates your, um, your ritual spells uh, against monster effects, which is very strong. And if that isn't enough, this card has an effect while it's on the field. So even if it's ashed, it still is a relevant card. If you control a Dogmatica ritual monster, you can decide to look into either extra deck and send one card off of it to the graveyard. This card is what Branded and Central Dogmatica wanted to be. Or this uh, this is like the better version of that card. What this allows you is game one, if you're in a tournament setting, you can actually figure out which deck they are playing. So in case they are playing a pile deck, you can actually decipher what their actual intention is uh, for, for example, summoning Fenrir. So if you see a summoned Fenrir and you looked at their extra deck already and you see like maybe one Arise Heart and then full tier uh, extra deck, then you can be sure that you're not playing against uh, Kash Tira. Um, so, or you can just generate more advantage off of it if you feel like your current card advantage is not enough. And this is once per turn per copy, the second effect. So if you control two of these, and let's say you control or three of these, and you control any of the ritual monsters, you can go ahead and send three cards from the extra deck to the graveyard. That is a lot. And that every turn, while you control them. Only in your turn, of course, but otherwise it would be uh, way too broken. But this card single-handedly fixes everything because it can be searched off of Ecclesia. It has Dogmatica in its name. Um, for other Dogmatica spells, we are playing two Dogmatica Lanity, which is our best ritual spell, and sadly the hardest to search. You usually search this off of Dogmatica Matrix, uh, and use it to summon either Helm or her, uh, the level 4, to then uh, send a Titanoclad or something else, to the graveyard and gain more card advantage. Uh, I will also give a comment onto this. Um, there will be a card called uh, Despian Lulu Violet uh, released in the next main set, so three months from now. And this is a level 12, and it's relevant for uh, 
Dogmatica Albazoa, so you can send it. You will have to play this instead of the level 12 I am playing in the extra deck spoilers alert. Um, and then for the grind game, we played two Dogmatica Macabre. Um, this is generally a very good card turn uh, three, and it also combos a little bit. And because we can play this card, we can also play two pre-prep, which allows us to search this and either White Knight or White Relic. This does not search uh, Albazoa, so remember, if it has white in its name, you can search it off of pre-prep. Okay, so this rounds up all the Necro, uh, the Dogmatica spells. I am already tempted to say Necros because I hope that Necros gets support on the level of this. So now we get to the last uh, Dogmatica card, which is Dogmatica Punishment. Cannot play Dogmatica without the Punishment, I would say. It is a very solid card, and especially if you have enough searches, you can just search it and enforce your end board. So, the, the nice thing about this deck is it is very good at doing one thing, and it's playing Ultimate Slayer. Ultimate Slayer may suck against Kashtira, or against a Shifter deck, or against Flunder, or against uh, Labyrinth. But this card excels against Tillerant, and it will excel also against Sprite, simply because of Sprite Elf existing. So, playing this... And because of a new card, we're also playing this, because this thing has become searchable. Then uh, we, of course, have to respect the, the meta game, so we play the best spell against the two decks that will make us have the most problems. Tear Lament and Kashtira both have slight issues with dealing with Book of Eclipse. So, of course, we play it. And also, this also doubles as a card that is uh, that is a disruption on your opponent's turn because the main weakness of this deck is sometimes it doesn't put enough disruptions down for uh, tier limits to uh, have to deal with. Uh, and Book of Eclipse will help with that. And also Book of Eclipse will help with other kinds of combo decks if they have a lot of extenders. The only thing you have to be aware of is if they activate Pot of Extravagance, you cannot activate this card. This is the only downside. And, of course, that can be ashed. Then, even more non-engine. Triple Tactics Tasking, or Triple Tactics Thrust. No, thrusting. Um, I would say that I would play three of them, but I currently own only one. So what you can do, if you do not own this card yet, you can decide to play Pot of, Ex uh, Pot of Prosperities instead. But this card is stupid, broken, and I hope this will someday end on the ban list. Because what this card does is it, cert it sets a normal spell or a normal trap, that means stuff like Pod and Punishment, or Nadir Servant, or Ultimate Slayer, or uh, uh, pre-prep, or triple tactics, talent, it will set it to your field. But if you can monster, uh, your opponent controls a monster, which they usually do going, uh, if you go second against them, you get to actually add that card. So you get to add the best of board breakers, which is stupid. So like, if you need it, this card can be any four of these cards, or for our last card, Imperm. So we have, with this card, the ultimate toolbox to deal with most stuff. Pot of Prosperity, of course, is another uh, indirect way to get this toolbox effect. Uh, so this is probably the cheaper alternative. Sorry, though, for the pure budget players. This will be kind of painful. Uh, if you want to uh, play instead something, you can decide to play Ash Blossom instead of this. It will definitely hurt the deck, though. Okay, so this rounds up all the main deck. As you see, this car, uh, this deck plays fifteen going second, uh, uh, twelve going second slots with triple, 
tactics tasking, and is pretty good at abusing stuff. So now for the extra deck. Uh, one Granguinol, the Dusk Dragon. This thing, together with Titanoclad, are ways how we can use our extra deck sending to enable the Dark Magicka engine. So what this does, first of all, if you would summon this, and there are versions of this deck that could summon this technically, if you play uh, Cartesia, um, this will send a level 6 or higher light or dark from your deck or extra deck to the graveyard, which could be relevant to send stuff like uh, White Knight of Dogmatica. And if you are able to summon this, you can send White Knight of Dogmatica and revive it with Dogmatica Macabre, which this is level 8, which is okay because this thing also has a field slash graveyard effect. So you can activate this either while this is on the field or on the graveyard. So if your opponent activates a monster effect that successfully special summons a monster, you can then decide to activate this effect by banishing it, and then you get to summon either from the main deck a Dogmatica monster, or from the extra deck a Despia monster. And I will say, you, uh, say to you right now, I don't have a Despia monster just yet, but there will be a, De a Despia monster next main set. Uh, that you can summon off of this. But usually you're summoning, uh, summoning an uh, Ecclesia off of this. I will spoil you right now. And Titanic Clad is for the end phase unconditional special summon of Ecclesia. So this enables engine. Garura is generally good. You could decide to play two of this, but I only have one, and I am only playing one. Uh, this depends on if you uh, decide to run the Fenris or not. Then triple Entus. This is not once per turn, and you're going to abuse it a lot in one turn. This rounds up the fusion monsters. For the synchro monsters, two arc light in testing is enough. You could run a third one if you fit, uh, try to fit it, which is fine, but two is enough. Uh, Geomathic Final Sigma. The only level 12 that is actually worth playing, in my opinion, because this is technically summonable off of a Diviner. If Diviner sends Diviner and you control a Fleur de Lis, you can actually Synchro Summon this, which is a threat for certain decks, because this thing is unaffected. Otherwise, this is just a level 12 uh, to enable Alvazoa. And then uh, we play an Omega to recycle our extra deck, mainly, in the grind game. Try to be as careful with this as possible so that you don't get this thing banished. Then, for our XC's monsters, we are playing two Zeus, and this is important because Kashtira will be banishing one of those. And we play one Kashtira Arise Heart. Uh, because we are already maining the triple Fenrir, it is actually worth it to play a Kashtira Rise Heart and two Zeus. If you play into a Kashtira board uh, and they activate Shangri Era, you are allowed to use any Kashtira monster on your turn. The, so the turn they activated it to summon Kashtira Rise Heart, which gives you a Zodiac esque Xyz monster. And Zodiacs already were very good at summoning Zeus, so why the heck not abuse that fact? So if we are able to like summon a Fenrir or Triple Tactics Talent take a uh, Kashtira monster, this is actually pretty effective. And then for our Link monsters, one Almirage, because Almirage is cute and also relevant for the deck because you can Link away Diviner. And one Tri Brigade Weapons bull, uh, System Bull Cephalos 2. This thing, first of all, has 3,500 attack, so you have a big punishment target. And not only do you have a big punishment target, you have a big punishment target that is effective because this card can actually send our good old Garuda from our extra deck to the graveyard when it's sent to the graveyard, which is pretty cool. And that is our extra deck. But wait, we got something extra. We got a side deck. And this is uh, temporarily. Uh, I have done a lot of testing pre, uh, 
pre the set release on Dueling Book. And from my testing, this deck had a lot of problems with decks like Labyrinth or back row decks in general, uh, if they run Floodgates. And I got some real good spice for you. Zafi on the Time Lord. Why do we play a Time Lord in this deck? First of all, it's a free normal song. Second of all, this has less than 1,000 attacks, so we can link it off. And third of all, it has two cool effects. The first effect, actually three cool effects. The first effect is this thing cannot be destroyed. The second effect is if this attacks in the end, on the end of the battle phase, you can shuffle all their spell cards into the deck, uh, their, all their spells and traps into the deck, which already threatens Labyrinth like hell. And the only way can, they can deal with this is Imperm, big welcome Labyrinth if they have set up, or um, Terrors of the Underroot if you gave them setup. Or Impern. Or, uh, yeah, or a Compost. But this in general, if they Compost this, you have this next turn and you can just threaten their card advantage even more. And all you need to do against that deck is remove their back row as efficiently as possible. And then, to make everything even nicer is, if the, if they don't have any back row for you. You can just decide to normal summon this, link it away into an Almirage, and because it went to the graveyard, you get to draw one card, which is nice. So this thing is an upstart goblin as a normal summon while you still can special summon your Ecclesia because you got an Almirage on field, which is pretty cool. You can even decide to main deck the Zafion if you have a back row heavy uh, uh, format in your locals or in your regionals. Uh, then we play Triple Ash Blossom. I personally respect uh, Triple Tactics tasking a lot. I also respect Book of Eclipse with this, and I respect uh, Flunder a little bit with this. It's not the best card, but it definitely is performing for me. Uh, triple Lightning Storm. Uh, this is good. This is something I'm still testing. Triple goes and match. We are a light spellcaster deck, so you could run rivalry or goes and match in this deck. Maybe rivalry is better, but it goes and match is better against uh, Flunder. So I decided to play goes and match, but I still have to decide. I've not had enough Flunder matches. And the last card we're playing is Triple Evenly Matched because this thing is, again, searchable off of Triple Tactics Tasking, which is stupid. Um, evenly Matched, generally a great card. So cool, this rounds up the deck. Um, again, if you're interested in this match, I will have a link to the picture in the description in a high uh, resolution. And I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, I definitely think that this deck is at least in the rogue tier, together with um, Labyrinth, or Bestial Dragon Link, or Bestial um, Branded. This thing is very competent in the hands of a good player, and it is very weird to play against because it throws people for a loop. For example, people have to deal with not being able to take this White Knight because this thing locks you out of special summons. Shout out to a friend that got uh, destroyed by um, misplaying in that way. Anyways, this is Ritual Dogmatica. I will update this deck list even more because this is currently my favorite deck. And in my opinion, like Necroz is generally unplayable and this is better Necroz. Um, if you have any questions, go into the comments ask me some questions. I'll be there, I'll be answering. See you later.